4th of July edition of The Last Word. I'm Lawrence O'Donnell. When the president flamboyantly signed a so-called executive order to reverse his policy of separating parents and children at the southern border, much of the news media reported it wrongly as a rare reversal for Donald Trump, the tough guy who never backs down, surprisingly backed down. That's what some people thought. But the truth is, backing down is what Donald Trump does. We can list many more examples of Donald Trump backing down than Donald Trump holding to a consistent position. He said we, he would never settle the Trump University fraud case, and then he backed down and settled that case, paying $25 million for the fraud that he committed against Trump University students. He said he would get Mexico to pay for the wall on the southern border and then immediately and famously backed down when the Mexican president said he wouldn't pay for the wall. He, Donald Trump said he would provide universal health care coverage to everyone in America. And then he backed down when Republicans in Congress refused to do that. He said he would not cut taxes on the rich. He even said he might raise taxes on the rich. And then he backed down and did a massive tax cut for the rich when Republicans in Congress told him that that's what they were going to do. He said he would eliminate the carried interest provision in the tax code that gives Wall Street bankers a lower income tax bracket than some of their assistants. And he said that he hated that tax loophole. And then he backed down when Republicans in Congress told him that they loved that tax loophole. As a candidate, he promised to reduce the deficit and the national debt, promised to eliminate the national debt. And now, as president, he backed down against fighting the debt and has allowed the Republican Congress to dramatically increase the deficit and the national debt. During the presidential campaign, Donald Trump opposed the only Republican idea for reducing the deficit and debt, and that is cutting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And now, as president, Donald Trump has backed down against Republicans in Congress on that and is working with Republicans in Congress on new legislation to cut Medicare and Medicaid. So Social Security cuts surely will be on the way. You see, Donald Trump doesn't just back down more than any other president. He backs down faster than any other president. Donald Trump told Republicans in Congress that he supports the so-called immigration compromise bill between the extremist wing of congressional Republicans and the slightly less extremist wing of congressional Republicans. Remember that the so-called compromise bill was not a compromise between Republicans and Democrats. It was a compromise between Republicans and Republicans. And Donald Trump backed down and changed positions three times on that one bill, which is to say he backed down three times on that bill before it failed in the House. How is that for backing down? We have never seen anything like it. Donald Trump is the weakest president we have ever seen because no president has ever backed down as often or as fast or as completely and weakly as Donald Trump. Joining our discussion now, Jeff Barrow, senior editor for Business Insider and an MSNBC contributor, and Jason Johnson, politics editor at the Root.com and an MSNBC contributor. And Jason, I always defer to the PhDs on the set, <laughs> a political science PhD. Ah, hard to think of anyone who's backed down more than Donald Trump and more quickly than Donald Trump. It, it, it's not surprising, though. I mean, you, you read uh, David K. Johnson's written about this. People who write about Trump's biography, they talk about The Apprentice, and they say the irony of that show was, was about him telling people you're fired, when that's actually not how he operates. Mm -hmm. He's always avoided, con he's avoided confrontation. He puts it off on other people. And, and with foreign leaders, we've seen it. You know, he talked to Penny Nieto. He backed down about the wall. He said, I'm going to talk to Kim Jong-un, and we will get denuclearization. Nothing happened. He writes, he, you know, he writes this sort of silly memo afterwards. So this is a president incapable of backing up his boasts, and I'm not surprised. And there will be very little that anyone can trust him on going forward because he never follows through. Josh, it seems like uh, not just Trump supporters, but a lot of the media falls for 
the pose of Donald Trump, the tough guy. Yeah, and I think that goes back to his career in real estate. I mean, Donald Trump would announce all sorts of grand projects that wouldn't end up getting built. He was supposed to build the tallest building in the world on the west side of Manhattan in the late 1980s. He's been talking for 30 years about building a Trump Tower in Moscow. It's in the art of the deal. In 1986, he's writing about how he's about to embark on a partnership with the Soviets to build a Trump Tower in Moscow. So he would he would announce these grand things and then not do them, and it would just sort of be forgotten. It was, it was on to the next thing. And I think we've seen that in the presidency, although I don't think we've seen it everywhere. I think there are certain things where he is surprisingly stuck to what he was intending to do. The biggest surprise of those for me is in trade policy and tariffs, where he, that, this is the one area where he really has broken with his own party, upset people in Congress, and has continued pushing harder on that policy. When he initially announced these tariffs on steel and aluminum, there were these big exceptions for the European Union and Canada and Mexico, and I sort of had your analysis. Oh, he backed down on this. He announced these big tariffs, and he put so many exceptions in them that they don't matter. Well, he allowed those exceptions to lapse, and now those tariffs really matter, and they're really shaking up our economic policy. Policy. And so that's one area where he hasn't backed down. So I think, you know, he, he does have a tendency to do this, but sometimes he doesn't, and sometimes it's c quite consequential when he sticks with something yeah, surprising. Yeah, and, and, uh, and Jason, the thing about the tariffs is that it, it is one of the single stupidest areas of Trump thinking, uh, which has already backfired on him in, in many ways that, that are surprising him, that he never saw, saw coming. Uh, but the, the other thing about it is it opened up a giant lobbying business right. in Washington, which is getting exceptions to these tariffs. And, and that's another Trump area where he completely not only backed down to the so-called swamp in Washington, oh, yeah. the lobbying swamp, he has made it swampier than ever. Uh, it, it is a soup now. He leaves footprints wherever he goes, yeah. there's so much of a swamp. I mean, it, you know, it's not just that he's opened it up for lobbying, but many of the people he's brought in, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't he promise us that he was going to bring in the best people? They were going to clean up and make government more efficient. And yet we've had constant turnover, constant examples of people that he's had to fire that he can't fire. And again, it goes back to his inability to follow through with his boast. Even Omarosa, remember, he couldn't fire herself. He sent somebody mm -hmm. else to go do it. So even when he has people where he says, hey, they're the best folks and maybe they're not working out anymore, the president has not shown an ability to sort of take control of the own Washington, D.C. that he had been complaining about for 18 months when he ran for office. Let's listen to him, because it's worth hearing him actually say some of these things again. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to him talking about raising taxes. Do you believe in raising taxes on the wealthy? I do. I do, including myself. And Josh, he backed down to well, congressional Republicans and to his family, probably, and gave himself and his family the biggest tax cut in history. I think one question is, is it really backing down if you never really meant it in the first oh, place? Oh, that, okay, that's, yeah. yeah. that's a whole paradigm shift yeah. to this conversation. Right. Go ahead, start. Yeah. And I think yeah. that there's two categories of these things. I mean, there's stuff like the original travel ban, which was significantly mm -hmm. more sweeping than the one that mm -hmm. ultimately ended up getting upheld by the Supreme Court, where the lawyers sort of came to him and said, this isn't going to fly, mm -hmm. you got to change this. And that's, you know, he really wanted the more sweeping one. He backed down in the face of, right. of, uh, of opposition and outrage and, and judicial slap, smackdowns um, and ended up with something that was more limited. On the other hand, with the taxes, I think he was just making stuff up and yeah. saying, oh, it sounds good if I say I'm going to raise taxes on myself. So I don't know that I'd call that a back down because I think the, the tax bill that he ended up signing was probably pretty close to what he wanted. It was an enormous corporate tax cut, allowed him to go around and brag about how much he cut taxes on business. And it was a big individual income tax cut that was good for him and all of his rich friends. So historians, Jason, are going to have to have that asterisk on the backing down column. <laughs> we believe he never meant this one. Well, yeah. uh, but you can see the dynamics of that, though, because here's the Republican running for president saying, yeah, I'm thinking about raising taxes, including on myself. And what that works for in Trump imagery is boldness. Right. It's a bold statement that no other Republican would make. And then it turns out, of course, he absolutely never meant it. He never meant it. He was never going to follow through with it. And you remember what he said uh, during the week with Kim Jong-un when he was negotiating? He's like, well, if, if I'm wrong, I'll just make up something you know, next yeah. year when I have He'll never excuse. admit it. I'll yeah. never admit it. So, you know, the president has always made it clear. I, I have always believed that the only thing you can really trust about Donald Trump is his mind is changed by the last person he talked to in the room. I don't even think he's always aware when he's aligning. I, I think, you know, remember, we saw the video during Parkland, right? And he's sitting there, he's like, yeah, we really ought to do something about guns. And the Democrats are like, wait a minute, this guy just told us yesterday that he wasn't in favor of this. The president changes his mind constantly. And because he can't be trusted, he is either sometimes backing down, sometimes lying, or sometimes, I think, just shooting from the hip. And unfortunately, everybody else has to juggle whenever he's spilling. Well, we saw those two White House meetings, one on immigration policy, where Dianne Feinstein made a 
a reasonable presentation to him about let's do the DACA kids and the president said to her right in that moment okay let's go do that <laughs> and then we actually saw the physicality of him backing down uh, with McCarthy California Republican uh, from the House at that table almost putting his hands on him to pull him back into the Republican spot where he eventually got. And then we saw the same thing on that guns meeting in the White House where basically the same thing happened. He started agreeing with Dianne Feinstein and, and uh, gun restriction advocates before Republicans had to f almost physically pull him back. Yeah, I think sometimes when we're, what we're hearing out of the president is a, is a recapitulation of what he's hearing from other people. Sometimes this is Republicans and Democrats in Congress. Sometimes it's warring factions within his own White House. So I don't think the president ever had any intention of raising taxes on the rich. I do think Steve Steve Bannon had an idea that he actually wanted to do about a new high tax bracket on very high incomes. His idea was, well, this mostly hits some, some corporate CEOs and some, some sports stars and Hollywood celebrities who don't like us anyway. It's not a capital tax. So I think Bannon had that idea and was interested in it. I don't think the president was ever seriously going to do it, but maybe if he'd just been talking with Bannon, he would talk about that. Similarly, all of his flip-flops on China, where he's soft one day and hard the next, is that him backing down, or is that that one day he's been talking with his trade advisor, Peter Navarro, who's a hardliner on China? The next day, he's been talking with the Treasury Secretary, who wants to take a much softer line on China. So I think you see him bouncing around like this, and it's a reflection of who, who's up and who's down in the administration today. The most powerful thing, the most powerful power that a president actually has is persuasion, right? History, that's, that's really all they can do is persuade. When you back down consistently, when you cannot be trusted, you are a powerless president. You cannot persuade anyone if they don't believe you're going to follow through. And Josh, the big, the big fear people have about the backing down, and this is across party fears, is when you put him alone in a room with mm -hmm. someone like Vladimir Putin. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's the big fear about the Kim Jong-un summit, too, that, you know, that there were things that the North Koreans wanted, and you see it even in the language, where we are not talking about our, our, uh, our exercises with the South Koreans as exercises anymore, but as war games. You have the president conceding the idea that they are provocative when we do that. Um, and so adopting the North Korean language, uh, nodding to the idea that we might want to take our troops off the Korean Peninsula, these are concessions that the president is making without even realizing that he is making them because he gets in that room and he's a weak negotiator. The Back down Trump policy. Jason Johnson and Josh Barrow, thank you both for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, Tom